Welcome to the Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 6 for October the 7th, 2018. We begin a new unit today, Unit 2, entitled God Destroys and Recreates. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is a faithful following. Our devotional reading comes out of the Gospel of Matthew, Chapter 26, verses 36 through 44 and our background scripture comes out of Genesis chapter 6 and then Genesis chapter 8 verse 19 our print passage uh, comes from Genesis chapter 6 verses 9b through verse 22 our key verse reads thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him so did he this is uh, taken from Genesis chapter 6 verse 22 from the King James Version. And Then our lesson aims today, number one, is to remember Noah's faithfulness in obeying God's command to build the ark. Secondly, to repent of times when we have failed to follow God's instructions. And then thirdly, to embrace the calling to do what God commands despite the challenges this entails. We have three outlines that will be a part of our uh, discussion today. The first outline is entitled, The Steps of a Faithful Man. The second outline is entitled, God's Assignment to a Man of Faith. And then the third outline is entitled, The Reward of a Man of Faith. And so we uh, certainly thank and praise God for yet another opportunity to be able to share this lesson with you. Uh, we have enjoyed our Sunday School lessons um, over the past weeks uh, as it pertains to uh, the study of the book of Genesis. And we have uh, went back to survey uh, God's creation, um, God's creation of mankind, um, and his instructions to them, uh, placing them in his garden and then um, leading up to the great fall of Genesis chapter 3. Uh, but today we want to move into um, uh, some of the account in the days of Noah. But the biblical context um, from the quarterly unit 2, God destroys and recreates, uh, looks at how God worked over generations to carry out his plan to bless uh, the generations, um, particularly the entire world through his chosen people. And so we begin with the call of Noah and end with the account of how God's covenant with Abraham's de descendants was secured through Isaac and Rebekah. Uh, these chosen individuals were given challenging tasks but were able to accomplish them because they answered God's call despite their human frailties and allowed God to work in and through their lives. So we'll stop right there but we want to make sure that uh, you know that if we are really going to uh, uh, understand this lesson today we need to employ uh, what is called typology uh, typology is a method of interpreting some parts of scripture uh, by seeing a pattern which an earlier statement sets up by which a latter is explained and we'll talk about that biblically uh, as we go along but so if we really understand typology and how it was used in some parts of scripture you'll be able to see that God was not only aware of the root of sin but as far back as Genesis chapter 3, the plan and prophecy of the cross and Christ uh, were uh, well underway. So don't forget that term, typology. So we want to be able to look at uh, Noah's account in a way where uh, we can appreciate what happened. But we also want to be able to look at uh, this lesson uh, in terms of the future. 
uh, keep in mind God still wanted the relationship uh, with his creation uh, that uh, he failed to secure or they failed to adhere to God's command uh, Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3 that caused some things to happen uh, but God was not satisfied with that arrangement so we want to keep that in mind uh, uh, Noah's account is a prelude uh, for what is to come uh, so we want to begin with this first outline that is entitled the steps of a faithful man this is taken from Genesis chapter 6 verse 9b through verse 12 the Bible says Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and Noah walked with God and Noah begat three sons Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Verse 11 The earth was also corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence uh, and God looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt uh, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. If you go back to Genesis chapter 5 um, uh, particularly verse 30 uh, well actually all of chapter 5 of Genesis will help understand uh, help us understand some of the historical account uh, in, in, uh, in terms of Adam uh, and Eve obeying God's command to be fruitful and to multiply they did that and so uh, through uh, the genealogy of many uh, that came onto the earth uh, after them uh, their children and their children's children and so on uh, so they did uh, uh, follow that part of God's command but at the same time uh, what was also multiplied was disobedience was sin uh, was corruptness was those things that were outside of the character of God uh, that caused God to react and so uh, we won't have time to uh, go back but I want you to look at Genesis chapter 6 verses 5 through 8 to help us really understand uh, the, the uh, complex nature of sin that had infected uh, um, God's creation uh, in a way that, that caused him to to judge uh, the behaviors uh, of his creation but I want to run very quickly if you will uh, go with me to Psalm uh, 1 and I want to just read a couple of verses here and then we're going to go to Psalm 37 uh, Psalm 1 uh, down let's go to ver uh, verse 5 uh, the Bible says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Verse 6, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So what I'm saying uh, is that uh, Noah represented, uh, as it says here, he was a righteous man. Uh, he was in right standing with God uh, but it also tells us in Psalm 1 uh, that Lord, the Lord knows the way of the righteous the Lord knew the way of Noah he knew his lifestyle he knew uh, uh, his adherence he knew how he was uh, walking up righteously before him and so uh, but there were also uh, the ways of the ungodly and, and what I like here uh, uh, particularly in, in verse 6 of Psalm 1 it's sure and it's precise in what will happen to the ungodly they will perish and that's, uh, that's where we're heading in this lesson today um, to help us to understand that God will always always judge sin uh, he always has and he always will but then if you look at Psalm 37 and this is a very familiar uh, uh, passage for us uh, let's go down to verse 23 uh, very quickly and it it says here uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way 
So we're talking about in Noah's account his steps, his walk, uh, uh, his path uh, uh, was that of a faithful man. And, uh, and so uh, uh, Psalm 37 says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God establishes how he wants us to live and uh, uh, it behooves us to to do and to obey and to walk in the commandments of God. Uh, and so this is what we find uh, uh, Noah's character and lifestyle to be. But uh, out of all of the fruitfulness in uh, from that uh, uh, stem from Adam and Eve, uh, men's hearts were depraved, they were corrupt, uh, and this triggered God to react. Uh, and so we need these characteristics of godliness uh, 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 in our culture today. And as we get ahead in this lesson today, it is possible for us to live in obedience to God's will and his way. But all the people of the earth at this time of Noah had corrupted themselves. And it is interesting to note that the Hebrew word for corrupt also means destroyed. So humankind had literally destroyed themselves in God's sight. His decision to blot them out uh, would literally do what they had already cornerly done. You know, let me say this. This is what we call uh, uh, today about self-inflicted wounds, self-inflicted damage, uh, self-inflicted corruption. Uh, so uh, it, it's interesting as we see here that God is going to ultimately destroy uh, uh, these individuals uh, and then recreate but these individuals had already corrupted themselves. They had already destroyed the purpose and intent of God's uh, uh, creative power in their lives. They took on sin uh, 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 instead of walking up righteously before God. Uh, they took on disobedience rather than obedience and when we choose to do these things it's, it's important that we understand that we are sinning against our own selves we're sinning against our bodies our own uh, 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 creation uh, uh, if you will uh, in terms of how God gave us life and we turn around and we destroy the life uh, that he gave us and so we want to keep these things in mind because a lot of times we try to uh, uh, blame God for the adversity and the things that 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 happen to us, and 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 sometimes we need to understand: uh, Are we suffering? Or are we going through things that that are in the will of God, or are we doing things that are outside the will of God that we have brought uh, suffering upon ourselves, and we have brought corruption uh, into our own lives? Did we do it? Uh, and so uh, we need to respond to those questions. Uh, and so the, I believe the, uh, the first and second epistle of Peter will help us under t understand types of suffering uh, that, that are of God's will. And then those things that, that, that we do uh, that are not his will, that, that we uh, uh, perish and God is... Uh, specifically in saying that uh, it is not his will that we should perish but we should not uh, destroy ourselves because God loved us and brought us into this world that we might uh, take part in the divine nature uh, and character and uh, uh, in lifestyle but the question is asked here in the quarterly how can a sense of urgency be aroused among the people of God to witness to the world bound uh, for divine judgment. And, and we won't have time to uh, get into this biblically, but if you have some time, I want you to look at Matthew chapter 9, uh, verses 35 through 38, to help you uh, understand a little bit better this question uh, that is raised here. But our second outline is entitled, God's Assignment to a man of faith and uh, we want to go to Genesis chapter 6 verses 13 through 16 I want to read this from the NIV translation 
So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Verse 14. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, uh, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out. Verse 15. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening uh, one cubic high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark um, and make lower, middle, and upper decks. So now God has put a plan in motion uh, to do away uh, uh, with the sin uh, and the corrupt nature uh, that is filled the the earth, uh, and it talks about violence. Uh, you know these types of natures, uh, this self-destructive nature, it seems to uh, attract more violence, uh, more corrupt nature. Sin is something that affects everything that it touches. It corrupts everything uh, that it touches. And, you know, I was thinking about Genesis chapter 3 when God gave uh, instructions of what uh, trees to eat from and what trees not to eat from. But, you know, uh, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1, the Bible says that Satan or the serpent is more crafty than any other created thing. And Satan or the serpent's intent was to just get his foot in the door. Uh, And he did that through the woman, through Eve. He deceived her. Uh, And then uh, once uh, he deceived her, uh, she took uh, uh, some of the fruit and gave it to her husband. And he ate. So it corrupted him. Uh, uh, And so uh, uh, it affected the entire relationship between Uh, Adam and Eve and God so Satan's uh, uh, plan was not to just cause them to eat from the tree that God says not to eat from Uh, Satan's attempt was to cause a disruption in the entire relationship uh, that Adam and Eve had with God and he was successful because of his craftiness because of his cunningness and so what I'm saying to you today is that when we allow sin to come into our lives it affects everything that it touches it affects our families it affects our environment it affects our homes it affects our workplaces and so on and so on until it literally kills us and so it's important to understand these things And so, but God is giving instructions. Uh, Keep in mind this typology here. uh, uh, Noah is to build something. So what he is building here, uh, I believe one translation, even in the uh, King James Version, talks about uh, uh, the ark being made of gopher wood. We don't really know what that is. The term is uncertain. Uh, But these measurements here... uh, if we calculate it correctly, uh, uh, well, let me just say this: a cubic is about 18 inches. So 300 cubics, uh, if when we do the math, will uh, I believe come out to about 100, uh, 450 feet long by 75 feet wide by 45 feet high. And so this is equivalent of uh, of, of an ocean liner. This is a very big vessel here. Uh, and so God was giving instructions to make these three decks. Uh, and so uh, as we get into this uh, outline today, we can see that uh, God's cup of tolerance can be filled and spilled over into judgment. So this was his divine decision when he reviewed the universal wickedness and corruption uh, on earth. Apparently, only Noah and his family still believed and followed God. Uh, God revealed to Noah his reason and plan to destroy uh, humankind. So we can only imagine what Noah must have felt uh, concerning this. But 
uh, Noah was further instructed to fashion a window to provide light and ventilation uh, but I like this here there was only one door and I want you to keep in mind about this typology only one door and three decks divided into compartments so this was an overwhelming assignment and required great faith on the part of Noah he had to believe God and accept his word and even though uh, what God had said seemed impossible or improbable. But as we look at this typology here, an excellent book, and I, I want to give you these scriptures because we won't have time to, to get at all of them, but we want to find ourselves uh, uh, looking at the book of Hebrews as an ele excellent illustration of the Old Testament types. Uh, and what God was doing then uh, uh, as opposed to what he is doing now but I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 1 uh, verses 1 through 4 and then uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verses 1 and 2 but I would like to uh, uh, note here that God was speaking to us and this is what Hebrews will tell you uh, in various times in his various ways uh, uh, God was speaking to us uh, uh, through many individuals that he used that represented a type of Christ that was to come and so his final word to humanity is his son Jesus Christ his final admonition uh, uh, to us uh, uh, is his son Jesus Christ uh, John 3.16 says these words, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. So if you could link Hebrews chapter uh, 1 verses 1 through 4 and then Hebrews chapter 10 verses 1 and 2 to John uh, 3.16, we can see that God's uh, 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 remedy for sin is Jesus Christ. Uh, and it should be noted this one door uh, 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 in this ark that Noah is uh, fashioning at the commandments of God in the 14th chapter of John Jesus says no man comes to the Father but by me so Jesus now in fulfillment of this type that we're looking at in the Old Testament Jesus is that door Jesus is the only door uh, and, and we'll see a little bit further here uh, in, in, in Genesis chapter 6 and he, into Genesis chapter 7 God is the only one that opened this door and he is the only one that shut this door after Noah and his family uh, these individuals got in and all the animals two by two came in the Bible is clear God sh shut that door and so we have to understand that what we're being offered God is the only one that can uh, 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 save us, that can bring us to where we need to be. We are not able to save ourselves. So I hope you can understand what we're saying here. But the question is asked uh, uh, in the quarterly, describe some possible reactions to Noah's constructing the ark on a dry land in the middle of nowhere. Apparently, uh, Noah did not stop working. And then the question is why? Well, obedience obedience to God is by definition the correct response to God's grace uh, making one justified as we look at the character of Noah that he was righteous uh, I want you to know in, in uh, another translation it says that uh, Noah found grace well he never earned anything he never could have earned his his way or his position uh, I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 2 uh, uh, verse 8 and 9 uh, but he found it God knew his heart God knew his way and so God establishes the fact of who we are and what we are so I want you to keep those things in mind so we won't uh, uh, think that Noah was somehow earning his position uh, with God he was not this was clearly an act of God's grace. 
but as we move into uh, the last outline the reward of a man of faith this is taken from Genesis chapter 16 I'm sorry Genesis chapter 6 verses 17 through 22 and again from the NIV translation I am going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens every creature that has the breath of life in it everything on earth will perish verse 18 but I will establish my covenant with you being Noah and you will enter the ark you and your sons and your wife and your sons wives with you you are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures male and female now why would God want that why would God want male and female of all the living creatures and then uh, tell Noah to keep them alive now we're seeing the reproduction uh, the being fruitful even to the animals that God were bringing in male and female keep that in mind and it goes on uh, to verse 20 two of every kind of bird of every kind of animal and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you uh, to be kept alive you ought to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them verse 22 Noah did everything just as God commanded him when God tells us to come to him when he extends an invitation uh, for us to come to him I hope we understand what God is intending to do. Uh, he is giving us an invitation to live. He is giving us an invitation to start over, to start a new relationship, to start a new endeavor with new goals, with a new mind and a new heart, uh, with the power to live the life. Uh, we don't talk about enough on the spiritual side of things of what God is offering to us yes God can bless us with things and 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 and, and uh, these tangible things that we that we love so much but in Ephesians chapter 1 if you would look over there uh, Paul was uh, uh, talking about that God had blessed us with every spiritual blessing and what would those spiritual blessings be that we have been given everything by God to sustain us in the Christian life in the Christian walk what kind of spiritual uh, 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 components is God saying that we have uh, you might look at Ephesians chapter 6 about the whole armor of God you might uh, 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 break that down about having a new mind or a helmet of salvation you might break that down having a, a, a breastplate to protect the new heart that you have uh, you might look at that uh, in depth to see that God is giving us even the power of the Holy Spirit to live the life this is what Jesus says to his disciples uh, back in John chapter 14 leading up to John chapter 16 so uh, there's so much that God is offering us um, and, and these would be uh, quote unquote the rewards or the benefits of faith of a man of faith so God is giving Noah something uh, to do but God is also saving him God is also sparing him for what is to come God is not just protecting this physical man God is also protecting this spiritual man God is also shielding his walk uh, Noah is not just taking uh, uh, the family members and his wife and the animals uh, Noah is taking his character uh, and it is being protected uh, uh, by God himself if you look at uh, um, uh, what he was securing this um, uh, this ark with in terms of uh, the Bible says with pitch uh, and so it's not quite clear uh, uh, what this substance is but we do know that it was a type of material that could sustain uh, 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 infiltration of water 
uh, it was a, a sort of a waterproofing uh, 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 material, if you will, to uh, protect the individuals inside that, 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 that they are not going to be affected by the judgment. God is precise in saving us. He knows exactly what he's doing and, and you and I will never be able to understand all of the things that God have uh, 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 blessed us to enter and caused us to avoid because he has saved us. Uh, an excellent passage to study would also be Psalm 91 a very beautiful passage that talks about he that dwelleth in the secret place uh, shall abide under the shadow uh, uh, of the Almighty. If you go on down there you will see how God is protecting even through the psalmist there uh, shielding us from what is happening to those who are outside of the will of God. So this is a beautiful lesson of typology to see Christ and what he has brought uh, 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 to the believer what he has brought to those who walk up righteously uh, before him that uh, Peter puts it this way we are protected by the power of God and this is what is happening to Noah and his family they are being protected uh, for what is to come and so we have something to be thankful for we have something to look forward to if we would give our lives to Christ and lastly, the question is asked, how is Noah's response to the task of constructing the ark an example uh, of the definition of faith? And then it gives uh, Hebrews 11, uh, the 11 chapter verse 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. You will be able to see that there. And then so uh, Noah believed that there will be a fulfillment and we won't have time obviously but I also want you to look at Luke chapter 1 uh, verses 41 through 45 I certainly have enjoyed being able to share this lesson with you and just to remind and encourage myself that that I have been spared uh, you have been spared you have been protected by the power of God you have been brought into the ark. That ark is Jesus Christ. You have been brought into a fellowship and a relationship with him. Uh, and then you should know that God has closed that door. So you can, uh, 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 I believe John chapter 16, uh, Jesus said, Those that are in my hand, no man shall pluck them out. So you will never be able to get away from the power of God. You will never be able to, if you are in a relationship with God, do you know that is something that God intended to happen? And he will do everything to keep you uh, where he uh, have brought you and, and how he have brought you and to protect the relationship. But we have to do our part as Christians. We have to believe and we have to also live a life uh, that is consistent uh, with the commandments of God we have to actually obey God uh, we have to actually live the way God has called us to live he is expecting it uh, from us and so uh, not only did God give Noah instructions but he expected Noah to complete those instructions and in doing so uh, Noah was spared but thank God that he was able to do everything I like that uh, last verse uh, verse 22 Noah did everything just as God commanded, uh, commanded him and this this speaks of Christ he did everything if you look at John chapter 17 you will see it if you look at Philippians chapter 2 the Bible says that Jesus became obedient to the point of death even death on the cross he completed his assignment which was to come into this sinful world and be a sin offering be a sin offering for the sinless for the sinners to be uh, to, to get in between uh, and to be the mediator uh, uh, between uh, uh, us and God and so we we are thankful today that we have received such a blessing uh, from the Lord so I hope trust and pray that you have understood something you go back and read those scriptures and see what the Lord will present to you and encourage yourself that you have uh, not just enjoy this lesson, but you see what the law was intending to do 
uh, through Jesus Christ. The lesson offers this closing prayer. Dear God, thank you for the privilege of walking with you by faith. Use us as faithful followers so that we have a positive impact in the world, in a world of violence and corruption. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we hope, trust, and pray again that you've been given something that will encourage your walk with Jesus Christ. And just know, he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. God bless you and keep you is our prayer. And until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.